Hello and welcome to the Star Citizen Weekly Review, covering some of the latest news, infos and questions answered over the last week from official sources that are relevant to the game. CitizenCon was last weekend and if you'd like to know more about all the releases from that weekend, including Squadron 42 trailers, the star map, Star Citizen Alpha 2.0 teasers, the referral system, the SC branded HOTAS, the Sabre Fighter, then please check out the video links below in the description for our CitizenCon overview, what is Squadron 42, and Sabre Ship Buyer's Guide. We've passed the landmark that was 1 million Star Citizen accounts, so we were graced with a letter from the chairman, from Chris Roberts, explaining that Alpha and module passes and beta access is no longer required on your account to be able to play the game. You just need a game package, making the game much more open to all. Players that had alpha access will be given 10,000 UEC to their accounts. Players that had module passes will be given $5 for credit for each individual alpha access and module pass that they had. So. For example, if you had three module passes, you'd get $15. And if you had two alpha accounts, you'd get 20,000 UEC as well. Our one millionth citizen goes by the name of Eden Star and was invited by his friends Pike Sen, who have both been given a Sabre Fighter to explore the verse with. Welcome to the verse, citizen. Instead of 10 for the chairman, this week we had episode 6 of 10 for the designers. So we'll go through some of the information garnered from that. We got given a few of the vital statistics for the Jeanne Scout. It's going to have at least two size 3 lasers, maybe an extra two size 2s as well. It's going to have one medium shield and between two to four power plants. It's going to be a pretty fast, mobile, agile ship as well with a top speed of 270. The flight model for all ships is physics based, so when they're doing thruster placement they model the geometry of the ship, then place the thrusters and then see how it flies. Then they'll readjust and move the thrusters round, possibly increase weight to certain parts of the ship as well, for example the Vandal Scythe, making it have the small wing a lot heavier to balance it. They'll occasionally cheat like that with ships to make them fly as intended. The Caterpillar's command pod can detach and reattach in space to the main hull, so it can also be used as an escape pod effectively. And the spine of the Caterpillar is static, unlike the hull series that retracts. It has six module slots that can be moved around and changed for the ship so it can do whatever role it needs to. Also, Drake ships are basically for pirates, but more seriously, piracy is considered heavily by the designers when they are creating these ships. NPCs or non-player characters will be able to crew both single seat craft and entirely crew multi-crew ships, the Constellation for example. And you'll be able to contract those NPCs to deliver goods for you or do missions. Although, remember that might be at greater risk, they might not react in the same way that humans do um, and might lose your cargo or, or something like that. Patch 1.3 is on the PTU, and we've had a chance to look through the patch notes. It has a host of additions and changes. It has a size 4 weapon, a ballistic cannon that's mountable on the Super Hornet and Cutlass, uh, a size 2 new mass driver as well. The Sledge 2 has become a size 1 weapon again. They've added buggies that spawn around Arc Corp in the social module, and they can explode and kill people. Dying in the social module will spawn you uh, in a hospital. Um, a new area is in the social module to explore as well. Uh, frame rate and lighting improvements. Uh, there's loads of other improvements and additions too. We'll do a full patch notes video once the um, 1.3 patch goes live. But there's a massive balance changes as well. Lasers are more accurate. Um, ballistic weapons have a lot more range. Ships and shields also have even more health now. This patch represents the merging of a lot of the ground and framework for all of the modules and patches to come. It is pretty buggy on the PT at the moment, but that will get fixed ASAP. It's always buggy when it goes on to the public test universe, uh, and it will go into the live servers extremely soon. We should start to see very regular updates after this patch is released. The ARC star map has been released on the RSI website, as well as a questions and answers first part too. So the star map contains the known universe as compiled by ARC map researchers. It contains data from humanity, the Jan, the Banu, the Tavarin, 
the Vandal have been offered to participate, but have not participated in the ARC program yet. The star map is getting additions all the time, and they're still working on what ships can like fit into what jump points. There's major new discoveries that will be made in the game. They won't be added immediately to the map. In law, that will be investigated and researched by experts. Um, there's an app called Skyline on your Moby Glass. This will overlay the over the top of this map with all your personal data, all the personal discoveries and missions and things you want to keep secret. The main map is, isn't is going to be like that interactive compared to the skyline which allows you to track your missions and that sort of stuff. They are considering tablet and mobile support in the future. The map isn't all of the areas or explorable zones. Some will need to be discovered, others may be kept secret by the UEE. There's a lot going on in the verse. If you haven't played with that star map yet, get on it. It's absolutely fantastic. It's on the website now. I'll put a link in the description. It's uh, got a lot of lore there, and it's got a lot of stuff that you can find. In Around the Verse Season 2, Episode 3, they immediately thanked everyone that attended or watched SizzenCon. Erin has been making all the studios more efficient recently, moving staff members to studios so that they can all work on the same or similar projects, moving them around the world. Erin has also been talking about some ships that are in full production or nearing completion. The Constellation is having just the finish finishing touches made to it to make it flight ready. The Vanguard variants are going to be ready to go soon, so we'll see them and put, they have to buy them in some form of sale. The Retaliator, all the modules are complete. They are just waiting on a tiny amount of code to make them all swappable. The Starfarer is a huge ship, and people that bought one are in for a real treat. The Vanguard is in full swing. The Sabre, um, they, they talked about it, it is in full production, and it has high shields but low armour, and that's one of its like major selling features. And it's going to be a ninja. The Idris is getting some love too at the moment. It's getting there. It's all systems go. There's animators currently working on female locomotion sets. Most of the male stuff's already done. And they're also trying to get female characters into the game as soon as they can. You'll be able to choose a male or a female character in Squadron 42. They're working on weapon identities to make sure like companies like Bearing are recognisable at a distance for the first person shooter or ship weapons. All of that needs to be kind of branded. I expect to see a lot more weapons soon. This week's MVP was Reddit user Dogs of Knowledge for his recreation of some Vanguard art in the Unreal 4 engine. It's actually pretty damn impressive and it's um, time-lapsed and it looks great. He's very, very skilled there. And this week's sneak peek was again some hangar lighting improvements before and after. Last weekend as well, we were given the monthly report. Now, this is actually quite a lot of information here, and I suggest that if you're into seeing what all the studios are doing with all uh, of the back of money, uh, what they're currently working on, uh, what they've got done recently, then go and read that for yourself. There is a wealth of information there that would take multiple videos to cover. The AI module is now complete that allows us to fill empty seats on our multi-cruise ships. It's full steam ahead on character customization, and they're making a lot of progress with that. Uh, the Crucible Toolbox ship concept sale is extremely close. The glass reflection bugs are entirely fixed now. Uh, the new component system, they've blocked out all the components on every ship, so it's chugging along now. Um, and the new death spirals that will make killing players a lot more satisfying are coming along great too. That'll literally be when you blow a ship up or when it's dying, it'll spin out of control. So in Reverse the Verse, episode 67, they talked a lot about physical merchandise. There are only a few subscriber patches left. We saw the sample of the Star Citizen Collector's Box, which was an embossed Connie on a uh, sh sheet of metal. Um, we saw, well, they talked about the Constellation USB key that they're making, but also they might consider making a Freelancer and a Hornet one. They're working on all the other physical perks, like the 2D map and that sort of stuff. And they're also going to do a pin, like they've done with the Constellation and a Hornet pin for each individual event where appropriate, so that you can collect the set if you went to all the pins or had friends that went to them. There's also a travel mug available too. The Morrow Tour, the intro that we saw at CitizenCon for Squadron 42, where they're walking around the Idris, is getting some love and attention at the moment, and we're going to see the improvements for that over the next couple of months. They're extremely backed up with CS tickets at the moment, so don't send any non-essential tickets in, and 
please don't send any melt requests in for uh, unmelting ships. They're all going to be on hold until a couple of at least a couple of weeks have passed, probably a bit longer, and they tell us when we can unmelt ships again. For those of you wanting to play out patch 1.3 on the public test universe, over the weekend they're going to be giving people uh, super hornets and cutlasses to test those size 4 weapons on. But remember, that's just a loner on the public test universe for a couple of days. Perks for referrals. At the moment, we can see that there's perks up to 10 referrals, but Ben suggested that there was also big perks or good perks for uh, 25 referrals, 42 referrals, and 100 referrals. We're going to see some new items in the Voyager Direct store next week after 1.3 is fully released. The Idris M and P are different hulls. The M has the actual mounting for the railgun, whereas the P does not have that at all. The Argo utility ship that comes with the Idris probably is not going to be sold separately, though you're about to buy them in the verse if you want them probably. The P-72 Archimedes is currently being finished up. There is going to be a sale on the 19th of November to the 26th of November. That's the anniversary sale. We're likely to see um, limited amounts of like Idrises and lots of other ships too. And over the next few months, we are going to see lots of new cool weapons and components. And lastly, there was also a Sabre questions and answers, and we'll cover some of the questions that weren't answered directly in our ship buyer's guide. The Sabre is built to be a stealth ship from the ground up, whereas the Ghost is just retrofitted to be stealthier than a standard Hornet. The Sabre will be able to infiltrate, hit hard, and then get out with its speed. It has no cargo space, but does come with a jump drive, and it will definitely fit in the Idris and Endeavour hangars. The Sabre is classified as a medium fighter, but because of its advanced construction and components, it would fall towards the lighter end of medium. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope that gave you a little bit of information that you didn't know before, or gave it to you in at least a digestible format that's aided you in some way. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, it really does help me. We're also using Patreon now for people that are so inclined. Uh, I don't really know how it worked before, but I'm having to take pictures of my cat in a hat. Um, Anyway, I'll see you in the verse.